Turn it. Okay, so today we're here in the uh, Finca Rustica. Uh, it's November now, and finally the temperature has, the daytime temperatures anyway, have just sort of dropped to the point where you can actually get out and start doing stuff in the garden again. Uh, October was so hot, 30 degrees every day, 30 degrees plus. So it was impossible to be out in the garden doing stuff. So you've already seen a few, few projects, I've posted a few videos, you've seen some of the projects we've, we've been doing over the summertime. In today's video, we're gonna have a walk around the plot and I'm going to outline all the different projects that we've got coming up on the channel over the sort of next six months. I'm going to kick things off outside the plot on our little rustic lane that leads down to the main road. Let's check it out. So we're out here now in our Camino Rustico, or our rural track, I guess. That leads us to the house, you can see all the way back there. We've got this amazing Uyastra tree in the background. This is the same tree I used uh, for the branch for making the patio lights in another video um, It's a it's like a wild olive tree. You don't really eat the olives, but that's basically what it is Really hard wood really good for burning uh, But really cool looking thing. So yeah, so basically in this this track here. Uh, it all gets overgrown the middle bit down here actually sets off the The pedestrian sensors in the car and makes the car auto brake. So we need to get it trimmed the side bits here grow up and obviously scratch the paintwork as well. So it just it looks untidy as well. So we're just getting and give it a bit of a strim, uh, keep it looking tidy. What we've got over here, I'll just bring you in closer. Okay, so this is wild asparagus. It's brown now, uh, so it's sort of coming to its the end of its cycle, and it's cutting back for the winter basically. But you can see here, look, there we go. There's some of the wild asparagus. So this one is has gone to seed. It's a bit too long now, but uh, when they're younger. Um, you can eat those you just lob the top off and they're really good grilled with a bit of salt or in an omelet or whatever but the bush itself is really hardy really spiky and it needs cutting back this is all wild asparagus all along here so we cut it back now so that comes springtime um we've got lots of uh, nice young fresh asparagus to eat and over here this is a wild uh, fennel plant um you can see here it's just just flowering um, pretty thick stalks, really hardy. Crazy how tough they get. If you leave this, it grows into this huge thing, um, and it's really hard to, to strain. Really, really tough. Um, I'll show you an older one. Um, but what they are very good for is if you leave them, is this, the stalks grow really, really thick, really hard, and dry out. And when it rains, all the snails, for whatever reason, seem to crawl up them, and it makes harvesting snails really easy, which is what a lot of people do in the winter time here. Good source of protein especially in the, the current uh, economic environment that we live in. Um, and just look at this fella. Can I say that? We've got a serious caterpillar. Look at the size of that bad boy. Okay, just to... Here's my finger, look. He is a good looking guy. Look at him. Move that out of the way. There we go. Right, I'm gonna go and find some older looking uh, fennel. Okay, so we're just coming to the end of our little little rustic track. This is the main road. And as you can probably see, all this here is the wild fennel I was talking about. See how big and chunky and gnarly it gets. Really hard work for a your typical lime strimmer to take down. You need some proper or a bit of kit to deal with that, which I do have, so that'll be in a future video. And then here, on the other side of the road here, same again, but you can see we've got the snails, look, I'm talking about. There's a couple more just in there, look. So you just pop them off and uh, boil them up, a bit of garlic mayonnaise, and they're pretty much good to go. So we're here now back, back at the house. Uh, we've got two things to check out. We've got the Bougain Villa here, which as you can see is completely out of control. Um, and then we've got this ivy which I've kind of had under control, but it's just too much to deal with, to be honest. Uh, I have no idea how to get rid of it. If you've got any ideas, you've got any thoughts on the matter, get stuck in the comments, I'd love to hear it. We've tried salt water, vinegar, salt water bleach, diesel, fire, 
take your pick of stuff. I know look, it keeps it down, but just doesn't get rid of it. So the problem we've got is, come and have a look at this. Okay, so you can see how it's getting underneath and damaging the stones and making them all loose. There's another example, look, underneath the stone there, and that's now loose. This is all the older stuff. So it's just damaging the wall. It's already taken away this barb, this section of barbed wire is long gone. So it just means the sheep uh, have got a chance to jump over. So that's why it needs to get rid of really and then get all repaired. Uh, so this is our Bougain Villa. Um, really, really pretty flowers. Look at the color on those. I'll bring you in for a close in. There we go. Look at the sun on that. Wonderful. So as you can probably see up the top there, all the wispy bits, they're all the bits that are out of control. It needs cropping back. Um, it's been left all summer long. Uh, it's had plenty of water and it's just had a really nice time. And look at it, it's just, it's just there. Boom. Um, so we need to cut it all back, get it under control. There's just too much weight behind it now. And when you get a lot more wind, wind in the winter, uh, the tree, the, the bush rather, can just, can just fall over. It doesn't attach itself to the wall like the ivy does. So you have to actually physically tie it, tie it in. But when you get too much weight, sometimes it just flops over. You can probably check out this picture from a few years ago, actually. Uh, so it's always good to cut it back. Now's the right time of year to do it. We might wait, wait a few more weeks until the flowers have sort of started dying off because right now it still does look pretty pretty. Um, but yeah, it's one thing we definitely need to get on with. Okay, so we've climbed up onto the roof. We can just see the Bougain Villa poking in there, poking through, should I say. Uh, you can see how gnarly it is. All this needs cutting back because it's just ugly. It needs sorting out. Pretty good view from up the top here. It's lovely. Typical terracotta roof. The chimney and then the solar panels. So again, we've only got four solar panels, 180 watt each. Again, just not big enough. So because, I mean, they've been there 15 years now. The price is so cheap uh, compared to how it used to be. So I want the whole roof solar paneled out. I don't think you can ever have too many, to be honest. So that's another up and coming project. As we leave the Bougain Villa, we come across the front bit here. And we've got this beast. This is a pink trumpet vine and it grows rapid. This all needs cutting back all the way. We'll probably just leave the one main stalk that's going over the fence with the idea of this going over, over, the, over the top there and creating a bit of shade. As you can see, it's quite a lot of work to do. This is kind of the continuation of our little rustic lane. There's a property all the way down the back end there, uh, which was in a fire a few years ago. So people just kind of stopped using this path, which is why it basically looks like it looks. The neighbor's trying to do a good job of keeping these sort of trees growing. Um, this is his plot here this is literally just agricultural land but as we come along here basically what we need to do is um, I need to open up in this area here build up some columns and possibly another set of columns there and then take away the fencing and replace it with a sliding gate because I want the tractors to have access to the field the big tractors when they come and plow and they do the thing to have access directly to the field so they don't need to come through the, the house area and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail as we go inside. Okay, so this is kind of the gravel area, which was basically where we're supposed to park the cars. What happened here was uh, originally we put down the mat in to keep the weed down, then we graveled it. But because we needed to keep access for the field, for the tractors, we stopped the wall there. And then the wall starts up again, just over here. So this area here is open and we had a ridiculous storm, loads of water, and it just washed everything down seeds soil you name it now it's like concrete so we've got no chance so basically once i open up the access for the tractors into the field down there so they don't they don't have to actually come into this area we're going to carry this wall across and then completely redo this get it as level as we can and then that wall should act as like a stopper when it re rains really heavily all the soil coming down this way and we'll try and maintain this area a little bit better Okie dokie, so this is my little tractor. This is a Pasquale tractor. Uh, it's pretty old, 1950s, I think, early 60s. Uh, but it's good enough for the few jobs that we need to do. But um, we've had a bit of an accident there and the tires exploded, so that's another job we need to get on with. Okay. 
て。Okie dokie, at this end of the gravel area, this is all the stuff that we cut down outside in the springtime, which has been drying all summer. So basically that's a bonfire to be done. Uh, this is my uh, mini rotavator, which we've got serious issues with the fan belt. Uh, I'll show you a zoom in of that. And basically, for whatever reason, the belt sits down inside there. So you've got to take the whole handlebars off, get down inside the belt, and it's just getting eaten alive. This belt was brand new, it lasted about six minutes of use. So if you get a stone stuck up in here, for example, uh, it blocks blocks the, the arms from rotating, but the engine itself obviously keeps spinning, so it just eats the belt. But you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, because it's all hidden away inside. So it's a rubbish, rubbish sound, really. But it still needs figuring out. So that's something uh, that just scratched my head there. Anyone's got any ideas on the best solution, then yeah, bung it in the comments. I'd love to hear, because uh, that's the third belt I've gone through in a week. And I don't know what the solution is. And then, of course, there's a sailing boat, which looks pretty bad, but it just needs a bit of a jet wash. It's been parked for a while, unfortunately abandoned. Uh, we're going to get a bit of a jet wash this winter. Check the, uh, the bearings on the trailer there, upgrade to an electric winch, and then replace all the rigging on the mast and get it operational. Um, it's a swinging keel, so we can use it with the trailer, um, but that's definitely uh, something I want to get done this winter because I want to get sailing come the spring. Oh, and we've also got a lot of pallets there. Uh, I've constantly got pallet wood projects on the go, and that's basically my pallet wood stash.